I know, I know, I know, I know. It is hard, it's difficult to go up against the Dark Fae Astronix, but I promise you it's not too difficult if you understand the mechanics and you understand some key components that you need to be aware of going up against the Dark Fae. So when you go up against the Dark Fae, she takes your champions and makes copies of them and uses them against you right off the rip. So going into the fight, you need to be aware of that and you need to have countermeasures for that. The difficult thing about this is you're going up against yourself, so you have the same speeds, the same like damage, the, the same output. So you need to find ways to circumvent that. The idea is to make this a full auto team because the Dark Fae drops probably what I consider to be one of the best sets in the game, and that is lethal. Gives you extra crit rate and ignores 25% of enemy defense. That's like Savage with a little bit of a kick. Having that extra 10% crit rate means you don't have to worry about that much crit rate. You could actually pump that into other stats like um, damage or speed. This is my 100% full auto team, and I'm going to break it down for you. We're going to go over things real quick. And let me just run through this. So we start off the fight by going through the waves. And it's important that you pay attention to the presets. I'll go over that in a bit. I'll go over the stats for everybody, the, the builds. I'll skim over all of them, but I'll kind of give you the general gist of how everything works. So here we're not using some of our most needed skills in round two going into round three. So we're going to turn some of those things off so you'll notice that Necmo and Lissandra in particular are not doing anything else except their A1s. And then it's just a matter of clearing this out. Of course, experiment as always, as, as I always say, guys, experiment, try things out. If you have a question, just try it out. Doing the Doom Tower dungeons, you don't actually lose anything. So here it is. The Dark Fae takes our, takes our team. And right now, what's going to happen is if I try to do anything, then Lissandra is going to go next. So what do I have to do? I have to take their turn meter and boost our own turn meter with extra speed. And then what do I have to do? Well, I've got to nuke down the other copies of me and try my best to not let them take a turn. And then I have to give myself another turn meter boost and try to push them back. It's all about pushing them back until you can nuke them down completely, try to control them. And here's the nuke. I am using Royal Guard to nuke down my dark versions of myself. And the only one alive is, of course, going to be Nut. We're going to push him back. The Dark Fae, when she does take a turn, is going to take a copy of yourself, but we're we're going to be okay. And then it's just a matter of doing this. And now we're going to be looking good. We have decreased speed, so the Dark Fae is going pretty fast. So you want to make sure that you're trying to either go extremely fast or have decreased speed while also trying to uh, keep turn meter back. I'll go over the stats for the Dark Fae here in a bit. I'll, I'll make sure that I pull up the... Um, the speed and accuracy requirements in fact let me just go ahead let me just go ahead and do that right now okay so for the dark fae on the hell hades gaming uh, website you're going to need a minimum of 355 accuracy to place the turn meter reduction as well as decreased speed and anything else that you might need because the dark fae has 330 resistance and you're going to want 3, uh, 355 to be reliable enough. If you want to resist anything, 375. The Dark Fae is going at 250, so you're going to want to be going faster than that. So 251 minimum, but the faster is always, uh, it's always going to be better. So we did this in 96 turns, 2 minutes and 53 seconds. Let's go ahead and run it again while I'm talking about this. So this is just going through the waves again, and then we'll, we'll see what happens again. But yeah, so 355 accuracy is the requirement. And you're also going to want to go faster than 250. And once you know that all you need is just turn meter control and a way to nuke down the other copies of you and outspeed and try to manipulate them, uh, this becomes a relatively easy fight. So if you don't have Lissandra, if you don't have Necmo, what you could do is use Deacon. Deacon is an epic champion who does turn meter control, so you're boosting your own turn meter while pushing the opposite members uh, the opposite team's turn meter back, and that's a great way to do that. He also places decreased defense. So what you could do is use Deacon, start out with Deacon going first, then you could place the decreased defense on everybody, and then have your Nuker 
come down and then nuke and then you just go to town on the dark fey so here we're going to place the decrease speed and lissandra is going to use her moves to push back the turn meter nut also has some turn meter control with his a1 allure is here because all of her aoe or all of her moves are basically not all of her moves sorry her a1 which is the only thing that we have open right now is going to push turn meter back so that was that was three right there so allure is actually a really important champion or not important but one of the easiest most accessible ones that can help you out in this dungeon specifically royal guard also has decreased speed if you're looking for someone to place decreased speed he also pushes back turn meter it's a four hitter so royal guard is really good in this dungeon if you don't have a, a royal guard uh, or you don't have like a, a deacon or another necmo instead of this necmo before i was running like another uh, royal guard and i was actually running another allure instead of nut before so i had two allures i had lissandra and two royal guards both of those royal gods were pushing back the turn meter as well as the decrease speed and that's pretty much the entire fight this is 100 percent it doesn't fail and even if it does fail even if you build this team and it does fail guys you don't use any keys these keys you don't waste anything yeah so again we'll talk about the substitutes deacon is a great substitute you could also use uh two allures two royal guards because of the, both of their moves are enemy max hp uh, moves so there's different ways around this you just have to know what you need so turn meter control turn meter up pushing turn meter back down uh someone to nuke down yourself the opposite copies of yourself and somebody to push back turn meter reliably so now let's go over the stats for everybody the builds and we're also going to go over the presets in fact let's start with the presets assuming you can build this team here are the presets round one we're going to close everything off only using the a1 same thing here round two we just want to save everything and then round three we want to open with energize we're taking turn meter away from the team and we're also placing increased speed and filling our own turn meter that's why deacon is an excellent substitute if you don't have lissandra because he does the same thing albeit at a smaller scale then with her a2 she's going to fully deplete but against the dark fey doesn't fully deplete a percentage of it gets pushed back Nekmothar, we're gonna let him do whatever he wants he moves pretty fast he cycles through his moves pretty fast so i don't have to worry about him here for round two we're going to make sure he closes off his moves here so that he goes into round three just with his speed weirding and just for making sure that everything goes as smoothly as possible we're going to make sure we prioritize that second one for the a2 so uh, a3 1 a2 2 so for now we're gonna kind of let him do whatever he wants again you can tweak this however you need to tweak just kind of run it and then see what happens and then adjust accordingly that's what you just kind of have to do in this game we're opening with the a2 to try to clear through the waves faster for round two and then we're gonna close it out so that we go into the fight with all of our skills so we're going to start off with fury of the king kind of like a mini nuke it doesn't really nuke down the entire team but it does enough damage it places weakened as well then the a2 is going to be his emhp move it's going to hit hard against the dark fey and that's what you're going to need to clear but if you don't have nut you could use another royal guard or husk i think i used husk once because he has emhp moves you could try cold heart cold heart is also great because she places decreased turn meter with her a3 as well as it's a nuke ability as, as well by the way a substitute for nekmothar could also be another allure i think i just mentioned that while we were in the run but i wanted to state it again here because um, some of you guys move through the chapters not that i'm complaining about it that's why they're there but if i if you miss something from another chapter i, I like to sometimes restate it here so you guys are in the know in case royal guard let him do whatever he wants keep this emhp move for round three we're going to open with this because it's going to be his nuking ability and then hamstring will be his second priority it automatically does it but just in case this is a four hitter with a chance it books up to let's see 50 65 75 chance of placing decreased speed and 75 percent chance of decreasing the turn meter this is on a four turn cooldown so this is a really nice ability to have as well however you do need accuracy to land these things so what did we say we needed 355 accuracy right we'll go over the builds for everybody in a bit but i just wanted to point that out there royal guard does not have enough accuracy so i'm not relying on him 
to place the decrease speed or the turn meter, but sometimes it does happen. But that's why we have Nekmothar here with his decrease speed on the A2. Allure, do whatever she wants, do whatever she wants. We can open with the A2, and the reason why I'm opening with the A2 is not to have her put everybody to sleep, but to place the decreased defense to allow for better nukage. After that, we're going to close everything off, and we're only going to be worrying about her A1, which attacks three times at random, decreasing the turn meter by 25% on each hit. And she does have uh, enough accuracy, and her speed is just about right. So that's why Allure is an awesome champion to have. And if you have two of her, maybe even three of her, uh, you could probably make this dungeon work for you here. Okay, so starting off with Lissandra, we're prioritizing speed and accuracy here. I don't have everything fully glyphed out and I don't have everything fully maxed out in terms of gear, but I mean, I could just do this right now. Maybe get some extra speed. Oh, wait, we got the extra speed. Look at that. So now she's going even faster. And let me show, oh, let me show you this last one bottom pieces if you guys want to know again prioritizing accuracy these are the total stats that i have for her mostly worrying only about speed and accuracy so again 355 accuracy is the requirement 251 uh, and above so 251 plus is the speed you're looking for books she's fully booked out masteries don't blindly copy masteries but for all of these champions feel free to blindly copy these masteries taking eagle eye if you do need extra accuracy we're also taking Rapid Response so that she moves even faster or has a 30% chance to increase her own turn meter if a buff is removed or when a buff is removed and expired. Let's go ahead and talk about Nekmothar. This is the Nekmothar that I use in Hydra. And these are the pieces of gear. He's in Provoke set. So I don't necessarily need to have him in Provoke for the Dark Fey. It just happens to be that he's already in Provoke for Hydra. Pieces of gear. Prioritizing mainly speed. Some survivability is here, not too much, but just enough because he is using Hydra, but he also places the Leech, that's why these stats aren't too high. 235 speed, he is looking a little bit slow. However, this is what I could afford with the Provoke gear that I currently have, but he's got the right amount of accuracy, about 100 over, or not even 100. He's at 435, you only need 355 for accuracy. 251 speed is what we need, but we're not going to worry too much about it because, again, we go into the fight with Lissandra's aura, which is a 24% boost. Plus, she also starts out by taking turn meter and adding to turn meter. That's why Nekmo and actually Royal Guard is going a little bit slower than what I'm recommending here. Fully booked out. This move right here, increase the turn meter and increase speed, granting an extra turn. Placing decreased speed is important. That's also why it's really important to make sure you have the right amount of accuracy here. So speed, accuracy again. Here are the masteries. These are his Hydra masteries. Buy me copy it if you want. If you have them, again, if you don't have Nekmo, you could use another um, Allure or Royal Guard, one of those. Just know that if you're running Royal Guard, you're going to want to have accuracy on him. In fact, let's go ahead and take a look at Royal Guard. I have two Royal Guards here. Here are the pieces of gear, mainly focusing on damage, making sure that he is going at the right amount of speed. You could put him with accuracy, but I didn't really worry about accuracy because we're really here just to have him nuke through the opposite version of us. So 5 plus K attack, 254 speed. Again, we only need 251 and above. 100% crit rate and over 250 crit damage at 285. He is nuking quite well. For blessings, I just put Phantom Touch on him. And here are the masteries. We're taking Helm Smasher to have a chance to ignore enemy defense. Our other damage dealer is going to be Nut. This is the same Nut that I use in Fire Knight. Here are the pieces of gear for him. Prioritizing speed, accuracy, because we need him to push back the turn meter with his A1. And here, right here, a three hitter, decreased turn meter. And if it doesn't do that, it places freeze, but against the bosses, there is no freeze, so we just push back turn meter. This move also hits pretty hard. You guys saw it. And then this is his calling card, his three hitter, enemy max HP move. We have Phantom Touch on him. This is also for the purpose of Fire Knight. Here are the total stats. Again, this build was meant to be for Fire Knight, but it also happened that it works out for Dark Fae as well. Almost 5k attack, or sorry, almost 5k defense. 250, we're gonna probably try to glyph that up to at least 251. 100% crit rate, 271 crit damage, 
and 400 accuracy. We only need 355, but for Fire Knight Hard, you obviously need more. And here are the masteries. There, we're taking Giant Slayer because of his A1 being a three hitter. And again, if you have two allures, you could probably pair them together to make this dungeon work. And if you want to see how I have allure built, check out this video right here.